Hello, you're watching the Single Malt Review. In and our three plus years of existence, we have looked at many a fine bourbon. However, we have sadly neglected the next state over, and we have not tried any Tennessee whiskey so far. Yes, we have remedy back today, and we have a lineup here of the four main entries in the, well, four of the main entries in the range from Jack Daniels. Yes, indeed. They've got this um, rather handy sort of mm. sampler box here, which yeah. we're always, always on the lookout because it makes it much easier mm. to review entire ranges without being literally a wash in yeah. bottles and um, subsequently a bit difficult to do mm. your work at that point. Um, so yeah, this is this is sort of what you call the the core range of mm. Jack Daniels. It's Plus not everything. Plus a you honey make. liqueur blend, which we'll sadly Oof, have to get to. But. Sadly, a very popular though. Mm. People cannot stop drinking these mm. jolly honey honey bourbons or honey Tennessee whiskies, as the case may be. Mm. But yeah, it is going to be. Um, we'll break it up into episodes, but it's going to be a kind of a going to be a Jack attack, mm. a Jack apocalypse, so, a great Jack off. <laughs> Maybe not their last one, but um, you get the you get the idea. Mm. Um, we'll just start with the first one for this uh, initial episode. Yeah. And um, while Dave does we pour there, I'll go into the taxonomy of what actually makes Tennessee Classic whiskey. Classic Jack Daniels Tennessee number whiskey. seven. Um, oh, they're going to they're going to get us with the lids again, aren't they? Oh no, not this time. It's alive. Um, so Tennessee whiskey, what is it? It's taxonomically very very similar to bourbon in terms of what it's made out of. Uh, the main difference is, is obviously the region. Uh, Tennessee oh. whiskey has to be made in, you guessed it, Tennessee, or the state thereof. And um, the big one, the big one, is the Lincoln County process, which is the name given to what's effectively charcoal filtration mm. of the spirit once it's distilled, but before it goes into barrel. So it's like a final step after distillation. Mm. Um, it is distilled, rather, it is run through sugar maple, so where you get your um, maple syrup maple, presumably, um, charcoal, which takes out a lot of what they would call impurities mm. and what, say, well, what Scotch whiskey drinkers would call flavours. Um, it purifies the spirit down into... You're much, much closer to ethanol. You're mm. maturing something that's much closer to vodka than um, even bourbon, which is fairly pure compared to uh, Scotch whiskey standards, um, and this is pot distilled, mm. which some is, some is. This will be largely column distilled, maybe mm. a portion of pot distillation, but we'll be pretty much looking at, at column continuous distillation mm. here. And so it goes through this charcoal filtration process and subsequently enters the barrel in a very, very pure state. Mm. So what we'll be looking for is a lot of oak character, a lot of barrel character, and not a lot of spirit character, not a lot of grain coming mm. through, but a lot of oak. So it'd be very, very gentle, probably very right. vanilla, and lots, lots of char, because mm. that's Jack Daniels's other thing, is that they are pretty free with the heavy use of char yeah. in their barrels. So um, we'll look for that as well. So a similar mash bill and similar maturation period to bourbon. More or less, yeah. But uh, uh, the, the differences, are, differences, in process. differences are in the process hmm. and the location, obviously. Right. Um, oh, I should, just to be completely oh. accurate, um, oh, I'm going to forget the name now. There is one particular producer that hmm. is historically exempt from the Lincoln County process, uh. but still can make Tennessee whiskey. Right. And it's something like, oh, it's, is it Benjamin or something? Never mind, not really important. Hmm. Uh, it's not something that we get. We'll certainly New remember Zealand. it if we ever encounter it. Uh, we certainly will. Yeah. Um, they yeah. are the one exemption to the rule. Hmm. Anyway, Anyway, this is our standard jack, is it? Yeah, it is. So to see this outside of its natural environment, mm. the glass of coke, is quite rare. Quite rare sighting mm. here. We did a quick uh, quick browse and tried to find details on the age of this particular blend um, or combination, or what the average age might be. Mm. Didn't turn up anything, but if anyone's got any ideas, then we're happy to hear that. Yeah, would be would be yeah. quite interested to know, I mean, because I could find... Well, I could find just about Jack on the ages of any of these whiskies. So, for all we know, they could be exactly the same age. Mm. They're just um, individual barrels or double purified or whatever the other mm. stipulations are. We just don't know. So it would be quite good if you could let us know in the comments yeah. if you're a particular expert in that field. So, this mm. one, the standard one, and um, as I facetiously said, it is uncommon to see it outside of a Coke mixer. It's very, very popular for that, probably because it is such a gentle and neutral mm. sort of a spirit. But it's also very, very commonly drunk with ice. Um, mm. I suspect neat on a hot day like we're about to do is not its primary environment, but mm. we're going to do it anyway because that's the only way to really taste it fairly. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> not a bad nose though. Yeah, that is quite smooth and mellow. 
Very smooth, very mellow, very yeah. slight. In terms of the intensity of the nose, that's... There is some, a little bit of... Um, there's some wood smoke, some sort of charcoal smoke. A hint of maple or bacon sweetness. But uh, good amounts of uh, corn and those other classic grains. Mm. Yeah, I'd say vanilla and char are the two mm. main notes on there for me. It's a very... As I expected going in, very, very representative of the wood that it was aged. It's given me good barbecue vibes, I like that. But also... Yeah, some there is a little bit of... There is a little sweet barbecue yeah. sauce, now that you mention it. Barley, corn, a little bit of rye. Mmm. Mm. I was expecting to pick up all those grains on my nose like that, but yeah. it's, it's subtle, but it's there. Curious. Yeah. Curious. That is amazingly light. Oh, lots of flavour though. It's not it's not a heavy hitter, but it's uh, delivering a interesting succession mm. and evolution of flavour over time. It's interestingly, it's interestingly sort of top heavy. I'd almost mm. describe it. There's it doesn't have much of a mid palate because, um, as expected, the spirit character is not really particularly there, and nor is the grain character. But all of the wood is still there. But the wood is normally. That's, you, you get mm. that as sort of back palate flavours and in the finish is when you get your wood. So mm. it's a weird sort of a ride that it goes on, not one mm. that we're used to because you know, the scotch being our main, um, main stomping ground here, that's got, well really that, that covers the entire palate. Mm. But with all that huge amount of grain and honey sweetness, it's got a lot of tip of the tongue um, bite to it straight away. Yeah, this one's really a doesn't. little warmth, not an, yeah. like an immense spiritus prickle, but a little bit of heat. Uh, that evolves quickly into lots of wood notes, lots of um, vanilla, some syrup, some, some heft and some, some char. Then you get all the grains, you're tasting all the various different malty, barley, rye characters. Yeah. The corn. And the finish though, the finish is what's really capturing me. It is, I can describe it as sooty. It reminds me, if you've ever accidentally taken a lungful of coal smoke or something like it, and I've got a mouthful of that, it's kind of wonderfully, very, well, very burnt, for, for yeah. lack of a better description. Certainly, it really represents that char. It's interesting in that it's almost, it's a whiskey that's practically all finished for me. Mm. Um, I get the majority of it after I've put the glass down, almost. <sighs> that's really quite interesting. Yeah. I think with water or ice, that might sort of bring things mm. a little bit closer in line but yeah as it is an oddly sort of vaporous ethereal mm. tasting kind of a kind of a dram so jack daniels describes that charcoal filtration process as mellowing mm. uh, and that's that's quite appropriate actually in terms of what it's done to the flavor profile here how it's smoothed certain things out let others just creep to the fore without making anything overwhelming or completely in your face and in tiny smidge of water would emulate the effect of having put this on ice for a while so i don't want to kill it with too much water so let's see how we got Hmm. No, that's oh, that's brought out more of the bourbony mm. characters up front. Yeah, that gives Being it more. more it, mm. it turns it a little insipid, though. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably teetering for if a light-bodied spirit at forty percent. I think that's wobbling right on the edge of right. um, of not strong enough. Um, I'd be kind of interested to taste a stronger version, which we're about to. Mm. Um, so. Yeah, that's an interesting first start. This mm. is the first real encounter either of us have had with Tennessee whiskey. Yeah. Of course, like almost, you know, you, Jack is something that just turns up. You yeah, know, right, and I've had Jack Daniels before, but not for a number of years, and that was just... It'll turn up at a, at a party, about. hotel, mm. airplane, you name it, Jack is just generic yeah. far away, you know. Uh, but to actually taste it empirically, mm. or as empirical as we get here, and think about it properly, I, we haven't really had that encounter, yeah. so it's... And, well, Pretty our last, I'd say, because yeah. there's a lot going on here, there's a lot to unpack and to come to grips with. But I think I can pretty safely say that I don't mind that mm. at all. That's pretty nice, really. Yeah. Um, for scores for that, it's, it lacks some of mm. the, it lacks some of the really depth, breadth, and force of flavour mm. that nice, you know, fine bourbons that we tend to drink mm. has. Um, but in no part of it is in any way unpleasant. It's a very non-confrontational sort of a whiskey. Yeah. That, that's a pretty easy 82 for me. What do you think? Yeah, it's a good versatile workhorse whiskey. And as far as an introduction to Tennessee whiskey goes for us, um, it's a, I think this is probably a good starting point. It's making me look forward to what's coming next. And I'll give it 79. There you go. So, yeah, good, good start from mm. Mr. Daniels ah. here. We will see... See what direction it goes mm. until we hit the honey liqueur, in which case it goes down, I can almost promise you. But we'll, we'll look see. at that as a dessert we course. Will see. We will see. 
We'll be right back with that. We'll see you then. I'm going to turn the camera off mine.